In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this mini cybersecurity pen testing PC. I made this project because I wanted to take all the tools available from Kali Linux and Parrot Security and put it in my pocket and take it on the go as its own dedicated mini cybersecurity computer. Now let's show you how to build this thing. So to start out, how much is this project going to cost? Well, my experience, it costed about 300-ish dollars for this project. And I'm going to show you everything that you need right here. To start, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 5. I recommend getting the one with the 8 gigabits of RAM and that comes with this adapter. We're not going to use it in this video because I'm going to use the Pi Sugar. Now, the Pi Sugar is going to power the Raspberry Pi, but you can also going to want a screen. I mean, you can do without it. You're going to see in this video, I'm going to recommend probably not getting the screen because I had so many problems with it. The screen is completely up to you if you want it, but it's really cool if you get it to work on this build and I'm going to show you some of the problems I have with it as well as some of the benefits of actually having the screen. Uh, keep in mind, you need an SD card. Um, you need the flash of stuff onto it as well as a Wi-Fi adapter. The Wi-Fi adapter in here, I'm going to end up taking out the housing of it because it's just so bulky and I'm trying to go for like a thin build. So I'm just going to get rid of the plastic housing. Also a side note, you're going to need a mini HDMI to HDMI adapter. So to start this project, uh, make sure you got the SD card. You're going to want to plug it into your computer. Uh, make sure you have the Pi Imager already installed. If you don't, just go to the website and download it. Once you do that, you're going to plug in your SD card into the computer as you see right here. All right, so now we're gonna get back to the Raspberry Pi imager here. You're gonna scroll down until you see other specific purpose OS. Click on Kali Linux, click on the 64-bit uh, Raspberry Pi version, and then click your storage device, which we have as the uh, SD. Now, if you wanna actually grab the image, which I kind of recommend you doing anyway, is go to click on Kali Linux, and click on the arm, and then download the recommended ISO there. So, and then you can do the same thing with Parrot Security. Click on the IoT, Raspberry Pi. It says it right there, Raspberry Pi right there, five. Click on that. And then I recommend you doing the security. The one I did in the video is just a security version and download that as well. Then once you're done, you're gonna let it write and it takes a little while and then it's gonna validate and that takes a little while. But while you're waiting, let's put this guy together. And the beautiful thing about this stuff is that you don't have to solder anything. It's like Legos, so just plug it in and screw it down and everything just works. Uh, there's the battery attached to the device. Now, if you want to do a simple build, all you really need is this. I mean, you don't even really need the battery pack. As soon as you plug it into power, it will work. But for this purpose, we want to, like a dedicated device that we don't have to plug into anything. And this screen doesn't work right out of the box. So when you turn it on, it'll just turn white. And you're going to have to get in there, plug in your HDMI, and configure it. That's why I said you need that adapter earlier because um, you're going to need it because not a lot of people have a micro HDMI cord laying around. So as you see here, I took apart the uh, Wi-Fi adapter. We're going to need that because it supports monitoring mode, which we want to do because I want to do a Wi-Fi pen testing with this device. And as you see, it fits pretty good there. I just ended up putting a piece of tape, but uh, I have some Velcro coming in I recommend you doing. And the Raspberry Pi stuff is done. Um, take that micro SD card, plug it into that little slot right there. And this is the command you need to get the LCD screen to work. Go ahead and put this in your terminal and hit enter. And once it reboots, you'll be able to use the screen. Now, I couldn't get the touchscreen to work correctly. And every time I did this, it messed with the drivers for the Wi-Fi. And also do a pocket build. I would have to have a micro keyboard and a mouse pad, which you see over there. It costed about like 20 bucks. And after a while, like I realized how impractical this setup really was. And I ended up liking just plugging into a monitor and just having the battery pack with me. To me, it seemed like that was the better, smoother, and a fit better in my pocket like operation. Um, but it, it's up to you. I mean, you can mess around with this yourself. I mean, I find this really useful, and my favorite part was taking the screen off. It was just less buggy. Now, if you ever get stuck where it won't boot into the actual like GUI OS, all you have to do is type in start X, and then hit enter, and it will boot into like the GUI interface. So you don't have to see that command line, or looking stuff, terminal looking stuff. So there you go. So that's powered security you're seeing right now. And uh, there's a, trying to connect to Wi-Fi around me. But it, it worked. But the best and smoothest uh, way that this thing worked for me was that it's just a mini portable computer uh, desktop without a screen. I d ended up just taking the screen off and plugging it into the computer using Kali. And I was able to use the Wi-Fi adapter no problem. And uh, it, it just worked better that way. So, I mean, it's cool having the screen on and all, but there's better options out there, which I'm going to be making videos shortly on. A bunch of the stuff just came in to the office today. So, I'm going to show you other recommendations. I'm trying to build these little mini ghost computers. 
That's the whole point. So my experience, again, having the screen is cool, but I had such I had a lot of issues getting it to work. I would rather you just maybe save the money on the screen and just use it as like a mini portable desktop with Wi-Fi uh, pen testing capabilities. You can see right here and being able to use um, the Wi-Fi adapter that's built into this is pretty awesome. Uh, and they get all the tools that are available with Kali Linux pretty much for free. So, I mean, this build was about like $300. I mean, you could save some money uh, getting rid of a lot of this stuff in here, but I'm gonna be building cheaper options, but this project was pretty cool. I mean, it did work at the end of the day. It was successful, but uh, is it practical? Probably not. So, what do you guys think? Leave your comments and uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, again, I had a lot of fun building this thing. I got more projects like this coming up. It was a great learning experience playing with a single board computer with the Raspberry Pi 5, but, uh, I don't regret it. I just think that there's some better options out there. So I'll be going over that in other videos. But this was a pretty fun project. Let me know if you guys are going to be doing it. And remember, safety is an illusion. And I'll see you guys in the next video.